Welcome back to the program. Today, I'm going to show you how to develop a very big professional sound by just adjusting how you practice. Let's get started. All right, now, when you practice, do you practice quietly, like at a, at a piano level? Do you practice mezzo forte, like a medium level? Or do you warm up or do you practice at a forte level? Now, most players will practice at like a medium forte level, the, the, and that's fine. But if you want to develop a big sound, you're going to have to practice with a big sound. You're going to have to practice at a forte or a fortissimo or a fortissimo. And that's the only way you're going to improve your power on your saxophone. So you want to get that big professional sound coming out of your horn. And to, in order to do that, you're going to have to practice louder. Now, whoever's in your house, they may not appreciate that, but you're going to have to do that. So if you want to minimize the sound while you're playing louder, what I do, if I'm, if I'm practicing in my house and I'm playing super loud, I will go into a closet. That's right. I will play into the clothes in my closet, and it really diminishes the sound significantly when you're playing in an enclosed space like that. So I don't recommend you playing loudly in your living room or, or open, you know, an open dining room or a bedroom that's open. Play, if you're going to play loudly in practice and there are people home, let's be a little considerate and play into something. So you can even put a comforter in front of you, a cover or clothes or, what, or a pillow in front, of, in front of your saxophone, and that will absorb the sound. This is essential. If you want a bigger sound on your sax, you're just going to have to practice bigger. Does that make sense? So I'm going to give you an example. When we practice, I'm just going to play a G on my alto sax. I'm going to play a G. Um, how we practice normally is I like a mezzo forte, right? That's a mezzo forte. Now, I've improved greatly over the many years that I've been playing, and to get to that professional level, I've had to play or practice at a much louder level. So I'm going to play a G at a fortissimo. -E Sounds like a truck, right? <laughs> yeah. So you're going to have to practice a lot louder. And when you practice louder, it's going to force or encourage your diaphragm to work more. And that is where the professional sound comes in. You push with your diaphragm, all right? Not with your lungs, but with your diaphragm. And you can also practice swelling the sound. And that's the difference between an amateur player or an intermediate player and a professional. They use their diaphragm to create a dynamic sound while they're playing. For instance, you can move from a mezzo forte to a fortissimo. And they'll utilize vibrato, which we've covered in previous lessons. Whoa, 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 whoa. And it creates a very dynamic, exceptional sound on the horn, even playing just one note. So here's a G, and I'm using my diaphragm, and I'm pushing the sound, starting at a mezzo forte, uh, and increasing it to a fortissi or a fortissimo or fortissi easy, and then coming back down. And in the process, I am utilizing my vibrato. All right, so let's do that. Just on a G, so you can watch me do it, and then you can pause the video and you can try it yourself. All right, here it is. That's on the lower G, and there isn't a significant difference in that sound when you're on, in the lower octave on a saxophone, especially an alto saxophone. You're not going to hear the edge that, those, that the professionals play with, that higher edge. So what you're going to have to do is play on the upper octave. So practice on all the lower notes and then moving all the way up your horn, starting at a mezzo forte, and then dynamically doing a crescendo up to a fortissi, or like forte or fortissimo, I would say fortissi, easy, right? An FF, forte, forte, fortissimo, so a triple F, fortissi, easy, right? Forte, fortissimo is two Fs, fortissi, easimo, three Fs. So try to get to the three Fs, the fortissi, easimo. 
Starting on your low D or as low on the horn, if you can go to a low B flat, awesome. Go to that low B flat if you can. And then work your way up your horn all the way to the top note on the sax. Yes, at a fortissimo, all right? You can start at a mezzo forte, but you have to, on each note, swell up to a fortissimo and come that come back down using your vibrato. This eventually will help you sound like a professional. It's gonna take some time for you to develop that dynamic sound, but just be patient and it will come. And I'm gonna give you an example of playing a little bit edgy on the upper, in the upper octave on the saxophone. So I'm gonna play a high G. Okay, that's a high G. Now I'm gonna go higher because on the saxophone, especially the alto, you don't hear it so much on the tenor saxophone. You'll hear the edge more on an alto sax. The higher you move on your saxophone, the higher notes you play on your saxophone, the more that you can manipulate the sound to get that nice edge, that edgy sound. And a lot of the edge has to do with not only their playing, but also the size of their mouthpiece. And we're gonna get into that in future lessons. But for right now, you're really trying to get that fortissimo sound in the upper register to get a little bit more of that edge on your sax. If, you, if you're going for that, like, that rock sax edge, that bluesy rock sax edge up on the top register of your horn. So let's go higher, let's go to a B, high B on the alto sax. pushing, I'm using my diaphragm, I'm really pushing like you're saying, ha, huh. when you're blowing into your saxophone, ha, huh. use your diaphragm to push those notes out, do not, don't use your lungs up here, you want to use it down here, your diaphragm, got it, let's try that, let's go up to a, let's go up to a D, high D, right, this one, Okay, so that's a high D at a fortissimo. Starting in a mezzo forte, bring it up, bringing it up. You want to be careful. When you are playing loudly, you don't want to blast. You don't want to blast your horn where it sounds honk, honkish, honky. That's not the sound you're looking for. So if, you're, if you sound honky, there's... You need to adjust your sound so it doesn't sound honk. So it doesn't honk when you play. And I'll give you an example of that. So let's go. Let's let's go on the lower G again. That's honky. If you get that like honk sound, back off your mouthpiece a little bit. So bring your mouth, bring it back this way, because you you have a little bit too much of your mouth on that mouthpiece. Honk. That's honk. This is not a honk. Ready? I have my mouth on the more towards the tip when I'm playing. And as you grow and develop, you will be able to control that more. Um, when I have to play super loudly, I can put a lot more of my mouth on the mouthpiece and not honk. But it may take you a while to get there. So if you sound, if it sounds like a like a broken uh, truck horn when you're playing, it means you're blowing too hard and you have too much of the mouthpiece in your mouth. Does that make sense? Thanks for joining me today on this lesson. I hope you found this valuable. And if you did, please smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. And that way I can continue creating great lessons just like this one. So I will see you on the next lesson.